Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Now, the Nigerian creative space and the opportunities for youth, well, the Nigerian creative industry has seen exponential growth, uh, driven by our vibrant culture and innovative spirit of all youths. From music to fashion, digital art and film, Nigerian creatives are making significant strides, with the industry presenting a myriad of opportunities which have garnered international acclaim, building a dynamic ecosystem of creativity and opportunity. The creative space is full of potentials and with the right skills, networking and exposure, youth can significantly impact their lives and communities both locally and globally. Now joining us to discuss this and talk about the opportunities that it presents is Olumide Faligon. He's a manager at EMEA Music and Culture at Google SSA. Good morning, Mide. Thank you for joining us. Hi, good morning. Good morning. All right, so we're talking about the creative space in Nigeria and the opportunities that it presents now. Can you just give us an overview on what we can look forward to, especially in the creative space? Because you're seeing a lot of people doing so much online. You're seeing content creators, you're seeing influencers, you're seeing musicians. Everyone is even going digitally right now, and technology has played a major role in this. So what can you tell us about the creative space in Nigeria? I think what we can look thank you for having me on the show first of all but um yeah so what we can look forward to in the creative space i believe is really more content and more growth to be honest i think um digital platforms are even advancing in the way they're helping content creators and uh, generally content um get exposed globally right what we've seen um i think the major benefit in the creative space creative industry in nigeria and even in africa um, is the global explosion of content from Africa. So if you're talking about music content, film content, whatever it is, whatever you know, vertical it is in the creative space, it's been exposed globally. So I'm, uh, I think we should expect to see more of that, you know, getting our content out there. I mean, it's already out there, but to get more explosion and more, more um, growth in the creative space. Mm. So how can people, because if we're talking about opportunities, there are probably people who are not even doing this right now. How can they tap into this creativity, like the whole creative space? How can they tap into it and even make um, some form of revenue from it as well? I mean, the good thing about the creative industry is the barriers to entry is very, very low, right? Um, if you have a mobile device, if you have a device that can, you know, that you, where you can create content, you can easily get um, creating content, really, I think. Um, the most important thing right now, in, in my opinion, is really to have quality content being created, right? Um, how do we even give people the opportunity to learn creative skills, right? Um, uh, because we do have lots of content coming out, right? Like I said, if it's music content, if it's film content, if it's show content, whatever it is, we have lots of content coming out. But um, as long as you have a mobile device, you know, um, um, a device that can get you connected to the internet, a device where you can create content, you can easily just get on a platform like YouTube and your content is distributed globally. I think the focus for us really is um, how do we support people to get the quality skills where they can create quality content, right? Um, I would argue that the quality of your content also um, would definitely help your, the kind of exposure that you get and the kind of engagement you get on the content that is created. Um, so yeah, I mean, we have programs where we are now trying to train people in digital and creative industry skills across Nigeria, and this again is to help people um, get mentorship, get, help them to understand what it, what it is to create um, creative content, um, and also just to help them in distributing that content globally. So are you doing like workshops? Because let's talk about Google. I know that um, there are some things that Google is rolling out in this season. Because when you look at social media, when you look at YouTube, like you just, meant, uh, you just mentioned, mm -hmm. Google is, you know, pioneering all of this. So what is Google doing, especially having to, having to um, train people to put in the right content, if we're talking about quality content? Because it's one thing to just have a mobile device and stay in front of it and do whatever, but it is important that that content is reaching the audience. So how is Google helping um, people in this time to ensure that they have the quality content that is being targeted for the right set of people? Right, so what we've done, right, and what we've been doing actually for a couple of years right now is partner with players in the industry, right? So we do scope, we scope the industry, look for players who are, who have programs or projects, um, training programs, you know, um, skill development programs, capacity development programs, 
and we partner with them, we support them. Because what we found out is a lot of times, people that have these programs usually have an issue of scale, right? So you probably have maybe somebody doing a training in, I'll give an example of, say, music production, right? Um, he's probably training, or this particular program is probably training 200 people, or maybe 150 people, right? And because they are not cheap, right, it, it can be quite expensive. So what we've done is to look for partners um, doing training programs in the creative industry and how do we support them. Support them in terms of financially, support them in terms of, you know, mentorship networking so that they can reach that scale and they can reach more people, particularly people in disadvantaged communities. Right, we'll probably get to the Engage program, right, uh, right now, which is with CIFA. CIFA is called the Creative Initiatives for Africa. We had partnered with them last year. Uh, where we had given a grant, a $1.5 million grant, actually to an organization called Mind the Gap, across three pillars. So there was training in digital space, there was training in artificial intelligence, and there's training in the creative economy, right? And this is supposed to train people in creative economy skills, uh, which includes, you know, music production and music uh, business, includes live production, cinematography, uh, motion graphics, um, across um, key states in Nigeria. I mean, Lagos is a very, very key market for creative industry. So Lagos was um, one of the focus areas, but we mm. went beyond Lagos. So CIFA is training in Lagos, in Port Harcourt, in Kaduna. As a matter of fact, most of the participants in the first cohort where they trained 2,300 people came from Kaduna, right? So what we've done, I mean, the way we approach this is to look for partners, right? We score partners in the industry who have the discipline, the capacity, and we support them. So they can read that skill. So more of, more of that formal training can get to more people across um, the country. Mm. So this um, training now, is it like a physical training or how does it work? And how do people even tap into it as well? Yeah, I mean, it's a combination of both. It's both physical and um, online. It's hybrid, right? Um, okay. Again, to solve that skill problem, it's important that you have it hybrid, but you can, you can imagine having thousands of people maybe in one room and trying to train them. That, is, uh, can, that can be a nightmare. Um, but again, so it's a combination of both, right? Of both online, um, on, online training and also physical training. Um, and if people want to join, you can easily just Google Engage Nigeria. Um, Engage Nigeria, you see it, you find it online. It's quite easy to, it's quite easy to find. Um, the second cohort is now open for registration. Um, so yeah, you can always just apply online. Hmm. All right, so what else can we, um, you know, do for people, especially for someone who doesn't know about all of this, right? How can I just wake up today and say that I want to start content creation? Because if we look at Nigeria, if we look at our economy right now, it's not the best. So it's important that people are looking, or even if you have a job, it's okay. It's important that people are looking for alternative um, means of income. So an extra income would not do no harm, really. Especially when you know that whatever you're getting is not even as much to make ends meet. But if I'm looking at joining um, the creative industry, be it music, be it fashion, be it digital art, or content creation, whatever it is, become an influencer, how can mm -hmm. I, aside the fact that, okay, there's a low entry barrier and saying I have a mobile phone, what, what, what kind of characteristics do I need to have? What kind of personality do I need to have? What can I do for myself to say, yes, I want to get on YouTube and I would just explode. My, my personality would be bursting that, I mean, I would make it there. Well, right, I mean, I'll, I'll first respond by saying, I hope your motivation will not be just financial gains alone. Um, quite <laughs> frankly, I mean, money is, money is important, definitely. Yeah. But um, that should be almost like a vehicle that would you know, maybe keep you keep creating, right? Um, you should focus on the value. And I know that is a term that's been thrown around a lot, but um, focus on the value. What is the outcome you're looking to get from it, right? That's the first thing I would say. Because before you get to the monetization part, you need to have proven consistency, right? Um, mm. Take, for example, on YouTube, you just don't get on YouTube as a platform, you start creating content and you're monetizing right away. No, um, it, it takes a while. Uh, um, again, it depends on your consistency, right? Um, and again, figure out the kind of content you want to create. It could be a musician, it could be music content, it could be health-related content, it could be, you know, something that is interesting to you, right? Um, the goal is, is, is almost for it to be um, almost for it to be, uh, I'm trying to be careful with my words now, but I want to say almost for it to be a lifestyle. So it mm. needs to have a level of, it needs to have a level of, 
it's something that is easy for you, right? But again, you need to also apply some professionalism into it. Right, so I would advise that is an area that you're very familiar with. It could be a lifestyle content creator, right? It could be comedy, right? You see comedians doing quite well on um, on YouTube as a platform, you know, the kind of content they create because it's engaging, it's funny. Um, and again, focus on a particular topic, right? Because I think I would always advise you focus on the depth as opposed to, you know, just trying to create content for the sake of creating content, right? So yeah, I mean, um, be consistent. I think that would be the biggest advice I'll give to anyone because one of the one of the one of the feedbacks we usually get is people complain like they started creating content and they get discouraged because they don't get the engagement, they don't get the likes, you know, mm -hmm. the followers on time, and it doesn't happen in a, in, in in a day or in a week, right? It's it, it's a marathon, not a sprint. So be consistent. Um, make sure it's content that you truly, truly, truly love because. If you don't love it, you get tired and you just yeah. give up, right? I mean, I'll give myself as an example. I've tried creating content sometimes and I just dropped and I just stopped it because I'm like, this is not something I <laughs> find quite interesting. So yeah, but um, I wouldn't say focus on the money initially, but focus on the, the type of content you're creating and be consistent. Be very consistent um, and learn. Learn from people who've done it before you. And there are always tools. There are tools available on YouTube. You can go online, read up on them. Um, and you just see how to, to, to go about it. I think, to be honest, creating value is always what sets you apart. It's always what makes people want you even more. Because if you do not have value, then nobody's really looking for that, to be honest. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and, and I know that um, collaboration also goes a long way, right? If you, because most times you can't do it alone. Even if you're doing it alone, when you have another person helping you as well, then it just makes it even better. So it's important that we also collaborate or these creatives collaborate with themselves to just have a wider reach, wider, wider audience as well. But speaking about collaboration, uh, shouldn't the government be collaborating with the people in the creative industries? Um, and, and what kind of policies do you think um, would make the creative industry go even further or farther than it is right now? Um, I mean, the government is collaborating with people in the creative industry. I think is um, maybe a question of awareness and also what areas of collaboration is happening, right? Mm. Uh, there have been grants, there have been funding, rather, that has been given from government to different um, players in the industry, right? Um, I know the Bank of Industry has given out so, you know, funding in the past to players in the creative industry. Um, there are also policies that are in place for, for, for for the creative industry as well. Um, the new government of um, uh, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu also, I mean, um, um, started the Ministry of Arts, Culture, and Creative um, Industry, which, again, it, it, it really is an indicator of the importance of the industry and how serious that government takes, of this government takes the creative industry. So, yeah, the government has been collaborating with, people, with uh, players in the industry in, at different capacities. Um, but of course, again, it's, 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 it's an ongoing process, right? It's an ongoing process. The industry is developing. Um, I think the, the role of the government is always to create an enabling environment, quite frankly, um, you know, where, where, because again, we're really dependent on the success of the economy, of the, of, of the environment, right? What is digital penetration like? Um, can people afford mobile devices? You know, so those are, those are, those are factors, those are drivers of the growth of the creative industry and other industries as well. Mm -hmm. So I think also the cost of, you know, cost of devices, cost of internet or accessibility, those are areas where government can help, yeah. Yeah, I think that would be fantastic. But, um, I mean, where you work, Google is also doing something when it comes to funding. And I think you had mentioned a $1.5 million, um, you know, funding for people who are from undeserved community or, or rather underserved communities for women and youth. So just talk us through that. Um, I, th I think we're looking at 20,000 people for the first cohort and, and another 6,000, if I'm correct, for the second cohort, right? So um, what is the main goal for this? I know that obviously Google is trying to do a great thing and because they're one of the largest um, players in this sector it is important that they're training people and giving them the right skill sets to come on this platform but what is the main goal for Google right now and how are they going to reach out to these people? So I'll start by explaining the program itself before I get to the second part of the question. All right. So it's called Engage Nigeria. Um, so last year, Google had them giving out a grant of $1.5 million grant, like you rightly said. 
uh, to an organization called Mind the Gap, right? Mind the Gap is focused on digital skills training for young people um, in Nigeria. And Mind the Gap, I partner with two other organizations, so making three organizations. They partner with um, um, CIFA, Creative Industries for Africa, and also um, Data Science Network Nigeria. So it, the Creative Industry Partnership is what is focused on the creative industry training, right, with CIFA. And the goal there is to train 8,000 people in the creative industry alone. The larger program is to train 20,000 people in the digital mm. space, to train 20,000 women and um, young people in the digital space. Right, so this includes, you know, artificial intelligence skills, um, 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 digital skills, and also creative industry skills. As a matter of fact, um, last earlier this year, actually, there was an artificial intelligence artificial intelligence training in Awusa, right, in Awusa, in northern Nigeria, that was um, mm -hmm. launched in, in in Kaduna. So engage Nigeria, like I mentioned, is for the creative industry training, and by creative industry, we're looking at music production, music business, um, cinematography. Uh, motion graphics, live production, all of those areas in the creative industry. Uh, they just completed the first cohort, we trained 2,300 people. The second cohort is now open for registration, so people who are interested can always go on the website. You can just search for Engage Nigeria um, or Skill Sprint, um, and you can register for that. That is the program. So what we do is to support them in terms of funding, right? We also support them in terms of mentorship, um, um, and also network opportunities, really. Um, and again, this is this program is done in Lagos, it's done in um, Kaduna and Port Harcourt as well. But you can always register online because a big part of the program is also thought online if you if you're able to get on it. Right. The goal of this is look, we recognize and acknowledge the importance of the creative industry in in Nigeria. Right. Um, the creative industry has seen a massive explosion from Nollywood to Afrobeat. Look, it's evident in, 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 in the global rise and explosion of Afrobeat and even our movies as well, right? I don't want to give, I mean, you know the example of the mm -hmm. A-list artists from your Bonner Boys to your David Doe's to yeah. your Wizkids, your Chris Daniel ETC, right? These guys are selling out, you know, shows and um, um, shows globally and abroad, quite frankly. Um, and, they all, and even for the movie industry as well. So it's evident that the creative industry is definitely a big opportunity for growth. And I think the important thing, again, about the creative industry, like I mentioned, is, one, the barriers to entries are low, but also it is really, really, it appeals a lot to young people, right? It's easier to get them um, to have creative industry, to, to be players in the creative industry, because they're naturally creative. And when you're young is when you're the most creative, right? I'll argue yeah. that. So mm -hmm. that is one reason why we're focused on, on this. And again, the economic benefits that come from the creative industry, like we've seen already. So I mean, this is the reason why we are focusing on the creative industry. It's one of the industries that we do focus on. And, and how can we help young people? You know about the population size of Nigeria, about, I think, about 74, 75% of the population um, are youth. So I mean, it's, it's, it's a no-brainer for, for, for us to actually focus in uh, the creative space. Mm. That's fantastic. I think I'm ready to be signed up. <laughs> I definitely <laughs> want to be a part of that. So I think you said the www.mindagap, is that it? My, no, no, www.engagenigeria. Um, Engage you can go, Nigeria. On, you can go, up, yeah. you can okay. go on Google and just search for Engage Nigeria. You can find it. So I'm sure there's going to be like a screening process for all of this because it's not just everybody that comes in that you take. So who are the specific um, type of people you're looking at? I mean, it's not a difficult screening process, to be honest. I mean, that is really based on the partner. Like I said, we're not the ones involved directly in it. Um, but as, as, as long as you can just register your interest in what program it is that you want to have, um, and uh, yeah, you go through the screening process um, if you're young, if you're interested in music production. I think it also depends on the area itself, right? It depends on the particular area itself. Is it music production that you're interested in? There needs to be a level of, of knowledge or know-how that you have in music production before you just go join a program like that. So yeah, but I think the first step is just to register and you go through the process. Okay. Well, finally, so um, I'm going to ask this now. How do you envision the creative space and um, how do we get continued support and growth in that space? I think you keep growing, to be honest. I think you keep growing as, as, as because the bar, like you keep saying, the barriers to entry is low. But the fact that digital platforms are here, platforms like YouTube will, create, will keep um, ex exporting our content globally, um, exporting content from Africa globally, I think you keep um, um, blowing up, quite frankly. Um, people continue to create content. Um, 
um, yeah, I think that, that is very promising for the creative industry space. And the biggest thing again is you're able to even earn from from you're able to earn revenue from outside of Nigeria in the creative industry, right? If you're on YouTube mm. and you're monetizing, you're able to get money, right? Not necessarily from Nigeria. So I think it's just always going to blow up, quite frankly. All right, that's fantastic. I hope that um, our youths tap into this. Especially, like I said, it is important that you have an alternative source of income so you can still have your job because from, you know, from videos I've even watched on YouTube, you're seeing people have their regular nine to five jobs, but then they still create like vlogs or have some channel um, creating value on YouTube or even on Instagram or any social media platform. Anyways, we want to say thank you, Mide, for coming and just letting us know the opportunities that we can have here, the youth can have, especially when it comes to the creative industry. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Thank you. All right, so we're speaking with Olumide Faligon. He's a manager at EMEM -E -E Music and co-chair at Google SSA. And we've just been talking about the creative industry and the opportunities that it presents to the Nigerian youths. We'll go on a short break and when we return, we'll be looking at a lady or rather talking to a lady who traveled from East Africa to West. Please stay with us. And when we return, we'll be looking at a lady or rather talking to a lady who traveled from East Africa to West. Please stay with us.